Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Mackenzie, a fifth grade teacher in Northern California. In today's video, I'm going to be comparing two online assessment tools that you can use to gamify your classroom. Using games in the classroom can be a really fun and engaging way for students to review and assess content. So today we're going to take a look at Quizzes and Blookit, which are two of the most popular online assessment tools that use that game-based learning approach. I have broken it down into five different categories to compare the free versions of both of these websites so that you can have all the information you need to choose the right tool for you and your students. Now before we get started, please give this video a thumbs up that really helps support this channel and it helps other teachers discover these videos. So let's get started. All right, so let's start with the setup. So for both quizzes and Book It, it's really basic here. When we go onto the quizzes website, you can click sign up and then you can just log in with Google or enter your school email address. With Look It, same thing, click sign up and then you can log in with Google or enter your school email. Really easy here to make your account and get started. Once you log into your account, there's already a full on content library that you have access to for both quizzes and Look It. So let's start with quizzes here. They have a huge content library of quizzes that have already been created by other users. So you can go up to the search bar and search for a quiz on really any topic. There are also filters where you can search by grade or by subject. On quizzes, you can also edit sets of questions. So if you find a quiz that you really like, but you want to take away some of those questions or you want to add some, then you can duplicate that quiz that another user has created and make it your own. On quizzes, once you find a quiz that you want to use, you can also save that and add it to a collection so that you can have folders of maybe different subjects so that you can easily go into that folder and they'll be ready to play with your students. So to create your own quiz, just go up here and click create. And then there's going to be a variety of questions that you can add to your quiz. They have multiple choice, checkbox, fill in the blank, poll, and open-ended questions that you can add to your quiz. There is also a teleport feature right at the top when making your quiz where you can actually search for your topic and it opens up this content library of questions from other quizzes that have already been created. So say I was making a quiz on the water cycle and I wanted to find a question about condensation, I can just search that here and it will give me all these questions that have already been added to quizzes that have the picture already. That can be really helpful to save you time and you don't have to reinvent the wheel when you don't have to. Now taking a look at Look It, they also have a content library. You can go up to the top and click discover and then you can search by topic and see what question sets have already been created by other users. Once you find question sets that you want to use, you can save them as favorites and then they're easier to find later on. Something that is different here is that you cannot edit question sets that have been created by other users the way that you can on quizzes. Now to create your own set, go up to the top and click create and then you can add in your questions. Right now, the only types of questions you can use are multiple choice questions. I think that does limit the learning potential a bit when using Look It, so I think it can be a great tool when practicing facts and drilling different skills. Now, if you use Quizlet, which is an online flashcard website, you can also import those Quizlet flashcard sets into the Look It site. So if that's something you already use, that can be a really fast way to make those question sets to use on Look It. Both quizzes and Look It have a lot of great options when creating those quizzes for your students. I do think since quizzes does have all of those question varieties with the fill in the blank, the poll choices, really does give it a bit of an edge over Book It in this category. So you have the game created, you are ready to play with your students, so let's take a look at how students are actually going to access that game and get started. Both quizzes and Book It have options to play a live game with your class or assign it as homework. So looking at quizzes, once you have the game that you wanna play, you can click live quiz and then you have a few options. You can either click classic, which is going to be entirely student paced, or you can click instructor paste where your class will go through the questions one by one altogether. Once you choose, then students will be able to enter the game code or you can share the link. If on Zoom, it's really easy to just drop the link in the chat and then they're ready to play. Another option would be to assign it as homework, which will be entirely student paced and you can set your due dates. 
Quizzes also can be linked to Google Classroom so you can push out their assignments and their quiz links that way too. Once students enter that game on quizzes, they also have the option to click a read aloud option where the quiz will actually be read to them. This makes this game accessible to even more students and younger students who still need that support. So for Blookit, there is also that live and homework option. Now it does depend what game mode you choose. Some of them only have the live option, some of them only have the homework option, and some of them do have both. Once you are ready to play a game with your class, you're going to click host on that question set that you've created, and then you're going to select what game mode you want to play with your students. Click host, enter the amount of time that you want your students to play, and then share the code with your students. Then students can go to the blookit.com website and enter that game code. So like I was saying, depending on the game mode, you can also assign it as homework and you can set the due dates and share that link with your students. So when students first join the game, they get to choose a little Blook, which is like a little square animal that they're trying to collect. So Blookit makes it possible for students to actually have their own account where they can log in with Google and then they can actually keep track of all of those Blooks. So for both quizzes and Blookit, it's really easy for students to join that game so you can get playing right away. Now the super exciting part, that game experience for our students. I started using quizzes years ago and they have really stepped it up to heighten that engagement and customizations that students can do to really create their own game experience. Students are able to work at their own pace so they don't have that pressure of the whole class waiting on them. After they answer each question, funny memes pop up and funny messages that really are motivating for your students. So when students are on, they have the option to work towards different themes, they can change the music, and after they answer each question, funny memes pop up with funny little messages for them. Now I know what is really exciting for my students when they play is there are all these extra incentives as the students are playing the game. They have power ups, they have power packs, they have powers like immunity where they get a second chance after an incorrect answer or a power play where everyone's going to get 50% more points for 20 seconds or double the points for a question. Having those power ups and power packs and those funny memes along the way make it really motivating as the students are playing that game. Quizzes also has a team mode where students are randomly placed into different teams where their points are going to count as a whole team total. So they're still answering the questions one by one on their own, but then they're pulled together to represent their team. So taking a look at Blookit, students don't need to have an account, but like I was saying earlier, one of the biggest incentives to playing the game is that students get these little Blooks, which are these little square characters that they collect and they can earn with their tokens that they're getting from all of the games they're playing in class. This really makes Blookit a game within a game. So if students do have a profile, they can see how their stats rank up against a global leaderboard. They can use the tokens that they earn in games to unlock new Blooks, which is really motivating as they're playing those games. On Blookit, there are so many different types of game modes. This just makes the gaming experience that much more engaging and exciting for your students. You can use the same question set on every single game mode that is there. So students really don't get tired of reviewing those skills. The games really emulate a video game-like experience. There's a lot of competition within each game. A lot of the games still have that level of chance where students need to maybe unlock a chest and they don't know what's going to be inside. Students can take tokens away from other students. Students also have the incentive of earning more books and earning those tokens. It's a really competitive game. Now, some of these games do take practice and your students will probably be able to share some tips along the way. I know my students figured out a lot of the rules of the games before I did. Both Quizzes and Blookit have really great options to really customize these games for our students because Blookit has just so many different game modes that you're able to use with the same question set. I do think Blookit has an edge in this category. Now both of these tools work great as review games and as assessment tools. So we're going to take a look at what type of data can we gather from that to inform our instruction for our lessons. So looking at quizzes, as they're playing, you can actually look at their progress as they're answering those questions. You can see as a class how many questions they're getting right, how many they're getting wrong, so that right after they're done playing, you can actually use that data to inform your decisions about what you want to reteach. There's also an average percentage you can view about the whole time while your students are playing, 
and that can be really motivating for your class. And something I always like to do is to play the quizzes a second time where their goal as a class is to increase that percentage. So that can be really motivating for them after you review what they've missed. There are also individualized reports that you can download for every student so you can see exactly what that student missed, which makes quizzes a great option for formative assessments. Now looking at Flickit, you can see the overall percentage of correct answers and incorrect answers for each game played with your class. So for each student, you can see the overall percentage, but you can't see specific questions they missed. Right now it requires a paid upgrade to get a more detailed report after each Flickit game. Because of this, Flickit works better as a review game and for practice for your students rather than a formative assessment where you can collect that individualized student data. Personally, I feel quizzes is a stronger assessment tool where you can really create a variety of different types of questions to ask your students and have that individualized report. For Blookit, the gaming experience is definitely the best out of the game-based websites that I have seen so far for students, just because how much they emulate the video games that I know my students enjoy. Overall, quizzes and Blookit are two really great options for online assessment as a review game for your students or even just a fun trivia game that you want to play. Both quizzes and Blookit are great ways to gamify that learning experience for our students. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, just a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing for all my newest teacher tips and I hope to see you again next week.